Harvest of Sorrow by uh, Robert Conquest. In the actual events, it was not that reasonable. If they found any food at all, they arrested you. Now, maybe early on they were more lenient, and that, that was in the later Stalin years. But I, I take leave to doubt it. They say that you can keep enough for your own, to sow on the land and for your own sustenance. But when they find food in your house that you wouldn't give them, you're, you're guilty right there. So no, you're not allowed to keep uh, anything at all. And if you give it all to them, then you're going to starve. So it's just a bad situation under thugs. Now, in the summer of 1918, the Civil War proper uh, begins. When the so-called whites, who had rallied initially to continue the war against the Germans, rose to challenge the Reds' control of Russia. Numerous nationalities situated as a rule on the border areas of, former, of the former empire of the Romanovs proceeded to assert their independence from Soviet authority. A score of foreign states intervened by sending some armed forces into Russia and supporting certain local movements and governments, as well as blockading Soviet Russia from October 1919 to January 1920. Then in 1920, Poland fought a war against the Soviet government to win much of the western Uk Ukraine and white Russia. It appeared that everyone was trying to strike a blow against the communist regime. How would that be if Poland can attack you and take part of your land? And not only any country, but Russia. Poland attacks Russia and takes land. Ha! Huh. Uh, it happened. So this is a very hectic time for the Red Government, surrounded on all sides by enemies who are not necessarily united. They call themselves the Whites, but the Whites wanted anything from continuing the war against Germany uh, to bringing back the Tsarist days to restoring law and order to um, re restoring the military. That's the kind of stuff they wanted. They didn't have a dream, as it were, like the Bolsheviks had a dream of every man, woman, and child have plenty of food and health care and stuff. That's what they were offering. Of course, it would never come true, but they were offering that. And the whites were offering, oh, it was better before, let's go back. Now, the Soviet government was not as worried about the Allied powers, who had intervened for a mix of reasons, and some of them weren't even very sure why they'd intervened. Um, like, there was an American garrison sent in to protect ammunition, because we were allied with the Russians uh, just shortly before. So uh, we went in to protect and stop the Soviets from seizing and taking war material. Um, that was one of the reasons that the West intervened, also because this horrible communism wasn't being established, but you get in there, and there's the Reds fighting six or eight different armies surrounding them on all sides, and who do you ally with, and how, and it was just a mess, and pretty soon everybody had withdrawn. We were all sick of war anyways, just got done with World War One. Who wants to go into Russia and fight? And there's a bad taste in everyone's mouth when you say, let's go uh, invade Russia. Everyone starts thinking about people who tried to invade and didn't make it, like Napoleon. So the Allied powers didn't really want to take the Reds out. They just were meddling around, maybe to stop the Reds from getting power if they could, but didn't know who to ally with and what to do. They didn't want to throw themselves into the fight. Then there's the Polish attack that, that took white Russia and part of the Ukraine from Russia. Uh, and they're not too worried about the Poles because they're not going to advance much further. They're not a serious threat, but they are worried about the white army. So the white, the whites are the ones that the Soviets really have to worry about and have to fight. Most, quote, most intellectuals joined or sympathized with the white camp. Now remember the communists, the Reds, are the workers party. Uh, they needed intellectuals and later on uh, they would have some form of intellectuals, but Intellectuals at the time understood that this was no way for society to go. It was the poorer people, the peasants, the workers, the masses who were hungry, who wanted this promise of bread to come true that supported the Soviets. The left socialist revolutionaries tried an abortive uprising in Moscow in July 1918. At about the same time, in part in response to the action of the left socialist revolutionaries, counter-revolutionaries counter-revolutionaries led by the local military commander 
seized Simbursk, a city, while Savinkov raised a rebellion in the center of European Russia, capturing and holding for two weeks the town of Iaraslavl on the Volga. Now, what's interesting about this is it's different political groups trying to seize power here and there, niggly piggly, um, and not united and not motivated by an ideology or a dream or a plan, um, just simply against what the Soviets were doing. Uh, so, and the Soviets are looking at a situation of anarchy. They're being attacked on many different fronts by many different groups for different reasons. And some of them are sort of opportunistic, like the Poles who uh, opportunistically attacked. So, uh, we're looking here at a civil war much different than the American Civil War with the North versus the South. This has one clear side, like we had two clear sides in the North-South War. This has one clear side, the Reds, but then the rest is just a nebulous group of people who don't like what the Reds are doing and want to try something else, but don't really have any ideology to, to go with. Uh, the communist authorities, in particular the Cheka, the secret police, had a firm grip on the central provinces and ruthlessly suppressed all opponents and suspected opponents. Now it says ruthlessly suppressed, but that means, I mean, there's a, what does that mean? That means guns and beating and torture and execution and jail cells. True to their tradition, the socialist revolutionaries tried terrorism, assassinating several prominent Bolsheviks, such as the head of the Petrograd Cheka and seriously wounding Lenin himself in August 1918. Pause for a second there. Now, when they said, we've got to protect the revolution, it was bullcrap because it's a police state that's supposedly protecting the revolution. But, in a sense, it was true. There were people who were, who were willing to use violence just as much as the Soviets did to bring about their own ways. And Lenin, as it says here, was injured in one of these attacks. Uh, the terrorist campaign provoked frightful reprisals by Bolsheviks, a veritable reign of terror, during which huge numbers of class enemies and others suspected by the regime were killed. So, uh, terrorism brought on a mass wave of terrorism from the Bolsheviks on everyone they could... This is, this is anarchy. Not so much civil war. Now it talks about the armies that arise on the borders. On the Don, Kuban, and Tarek areas in the south and southeast, all these areas gave rise to local anti-Bolshevik Cossack governments. The White Volunteer Army emerged in southern Russia. Other centers of opposition to the communists sprang up in the east. In Samara, on the Vogel, Volga, Chernov, headed a government composed of members of the Constituent Assembly. Both the Urals and the Orenburg Cossacks turned against Red Moscow. All The All-Russian Directory of five members was established in Omsk in western Siberia in September 1918 as a result of a conference attended by anti-Bolshevik political parties and local governments of eastern Russia. So, so whole, the whole of Siberia could have broke off into a separate country there are enough people there, maybe. Following a military coup, the director was replaced by another anti-Red government, that of uh, Kolchak, a commander of the Cossacks of Trabakalaya. Gregory Semenov ruled a part of eastern Siberia with the support of the Japanese. So this just puts more stress on the fact that uh, they had slivers breaking off everywhere. Uh, a new government also emerged in Vladivostok, and other governments elsewhere. Not a north-south two massive camps, but one group trying to do something and everyone not cooperating and taking advantage of the chaos. In the north, a government, uh, an anti-Soviet government arose in Archangel, uh, supported by the French and British, and in Estonia, um, a small government was established um, threatening Petrograd. So, on all sides, being chewed up. Quote, the civil war, which broke out in the summer of 1918,